Welcome to presentation number 12 in our series Rereading Revelation. We have reached <clears throat> the section uh, known as the Seven Trumpets, and that runs uh, the, the first one that I will do today it runs from 8 1 to 9 21. <clears throat> but the full Seven Trumpets runs all the way through chapter 11. But today, Eight, uh, eight one two or eight two actually to uh, nine twenty one. So when we look at the full scope of the seven trumpets, yes, it runs from eight two, chapter eight verse two to eleven verse nineteen, <clears throat> and covers then several several chapters. <clears throat> so the outline looks like this. The first six trumpets here from 8.2 to 9.21. Then there is an intermission, just as there was an intermission between the sixth and the seventh seal. There is a similar interruption between the sixth and the seventh trumpet that covers most of two chapters, chapter 10 and most of chapter 11. And... Chapter 10, <clears throat> I put the headline Mission on that one. Chapter 11, Method. Very intriguing. And, and then we have the seventh trumpet here at the end of chapter 11. And here is a very old illustration from the Bamberg Apocalypse with the seven uh, trumpets, the angels and the seven trumpets lined up. So <clears throat> let's... Just put one more thing in here. Uh, yes, illustrations. What, what is the message of the seven trumpets? And here is my take on it. I, I need to foreground it. And then I ask the viewer to test whether we present evidence in support of this view. That the seven trumpets brings to view just what the welcome apocalypse thinks. It brings to view a demonic reality. Calamities happen in the world. In the view of Revelation's trumpets, there is a demonic agent behind it. And just to highlight this detail here, these are demonic figures, and the trumpet calamities are the result of demonic agency. We are going to propose that and ask for your feedback and evaluation. So here is one more thing in my outline. You see here, 8.2 to 9.21, the first six trumpets, that's the topic today. But here I have the same verses, same passage uh, under another headline, the trumpets and the quest for history. I'll do that next time. That's the next topic. Today, we're doing the first six trumpets textually, and we'll see what we come up with. <clears throat> One more thing. The seven seals, the retrospective. So here is a summary of what I think we have done there. We went from the silence of incomprehension here in the Heavenly Council in chapter 5 to the silence of awe and wonder in chapter 8, verse 1. Silence in heaven for about half an hour. That's the silence of awe and wonder. It is, in some ways, the silence of comprehension. That is the one thing. And then we had all these calamities, all these hard questions here in the, on one side of the scales here, in uh, <clears throat> the seals, Revelation seals, the four horsemen and the injustice that <clears throat> bothers the martyrs under the altar. And on the other side of the scale, we have the lamb killed with violence as the revealer and as the revelation and the weight of the lamb killed with violence is more weighty than all of these things. So that's also what we have done. <clears throat> We're ready to read chapter 8 in the book of Revelation verse from verse 2. 
And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. Another angel with a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given a great quantity of incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar that is before the throne. Let me just pause a second here and say they are praying and someone is helping their prayers. There is an angel helping the prayers as if to magnify the signal that goes from earth to heaven and help it along. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. Then the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and threw it on the earth. And there were peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. And we examined that expression, that those terms, uh, last time, because they also occur in the relation to the seven seals. And we said that those are tokens, signifiers of revelation. And so here in the, <clears throat> this I think is the Cambrai Apocalypse, here we have the scene of the angels with the seven trumpets. They are given seven trumpets. And here is the, uh, the incense and the altar uh, that is also depicted in our text. <clears throat> and here is another one. This is from the Deuce Apocalypse. Lots of incense added. You know, let's help them. Heaven is on our side. Heaven is on the side of humans and want to help us and uh, and sort of help our signals uh, reach and here again there at the, in this corner the angel throws the center sensor uh, on the ground and in this one uh, the trinity apocalypse that is the most elaborate of these this is the 13th century we have it again trumpets here the altar, or here actually we have it in relation to the book with seven seals. All of it seems to belong in that setting actually. And here uh, we have the, the incense and here the censer is thrown on the ground and we are ready to read on. <clears throat> no, we are not ready to read on quite yet. We need to repeat uh, that uh, thing from uh, the Old Testament and just not uh, skip that one. Uh, remember, we read in Exodus in chapter 19, uh, a scene God makes an appearance on Sinai. Uh, <clears throat> on the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning as well as a thick cloud on the mountain and a blast of a trumpet so loud that all the people who were in the camp trembled. As the blast of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. What did we say? We said that this scene that happens when the angel throws the censer on the ground is reminiscent of Sinai, when God made an appearance, when the Israelites had an encounter with God. That's the connotation of the trumpets as well. And <clears throat> this is... Mark Chagall's picture of God appearing to Moses and to the Israelites. Uh, so we have a revelation in progress. <clears throat> and then there is this text from Isaiah. It's quite a uh, remarkable text. All you inhabitants of the world, you who live on the earth, no one excluded. When a signal is raised on the mountain, look. When a trumpet is blown, listen. Those are, that's a signifier of paying attention because God is going to show us something. And again, just like in the seven scenes, a revelation is in progress. That's what we are <coughs> uh, witnessing. The first trumpet. The first angel blew his trumpet and there came hail and fire mixed with blood and they were hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So this is a 
this is the first angel. And just to see what sort of mixture comes here, hail we have seen. We have not seen hail and fire. That's an uncommon combination. Hail and fire mixed with blood. That we have certainly not seen. So already the terminology here suggests something unnatural. That is what seems to be featured right in the way <coughs> this is expressed. So now I want to ask three or four questions and I will give my opinion here. And then we will see if, I, if our presentation provides evidence for those conclusions. So looking at the what of the trumpets with only the first trumpet as our evidence, the what, is it good or bad? It's bad. No one will disagree with that. That one is an easy one. Now here is another one. By whom? Who is doing it? Because that isn't completely obvious, even though I have hinted at it already and more than hinted at it, because the verbs in the trumpet sequence are in the passive voice. And the passive voice uh, veils or anonymizes the acting subject. If I say, <clears throat> the stone was thrown, you know that a stone was thrown, but you don't know who did it. That's the passive voice. It doesn't tell us who did it. If I say, the boy threw the stone, that is the active voice. And you know that a stone was thrown, and you know who did it. So Revelation uses the passive voice and tells us that something happened, and it is up to us now to find out who did it. And who did it? Well, here is who did it in uh, my sort of proposing to you that it was the evil one who did it. Okay, and there is a repetitious mention of the thirds, a third of this, a third of that. It goes on and on in the trumpet sequence. Is Third is usually a measure of quantity. But here I will say <clears throat> that it is a signifier of agency, more than just describing, oh, it was so much of this, it was so much of that. It is actually helping us to see the agent, the, the whom, who did it. And then uh, the last one, are the scenes in the trumpet sequence scenes of retribution, divine retribution? Or are they scenes, features, exhibits of revelation? Re uh, and here, again, with some emphasis, <laughs> revelation, not retribution, and not divine agency, but divine revelation of what and the bad side is doing. Well, we need some uh, pictures. <clears throat> this is the Deus Apocalypse with the first angel and the uh, raining of hail and fire mixed with blood. The artist has done a pretty good job. And then <clears throat> we have the more elaborate the Trinity Apocalypse. Let me stand here and you see the uh, all the angels here, and then the first one blowing, and there is rain, uh, or there is uh, hail and fire mixed with blood, and one third is the damage. You see here, there are, uh, if you look at it, you can see that two thirds are spared and one third is damaged. So give credit to the artist for, <clears throat> for paying attention to detail, as should we. So what now? Because we face a reading tradition. We face a, a reading tradition that doesn't quite agree with what I have proposed or hinted at. The reading tradition is thinking that the trumpets is really retribution with God as the agent. And I could take 90, 95% of commentators, maybe close to 99%. And they will all lean 
toward the view that we are having trumpets as divine retribution. So here is one uh, a recent one, Osborne, judgments that God will pour out upon the unsaved world. God is the agent, God is doing it. Here is Greg Beale, actual judgments on the majority of Earth's inhabitants. Here is a longer one. The terrors about to intensify uh, are not caused by independent powers or evil powers. All proceeds ultimately from the sovereign hand of the one God. These are pretty unambiguous statements that this is divine retribution and not uh, revelation as we have suggested. Here are some people I know and I consider them friends and I am respectful of what they say and I wish to pursue an alternative option. So here is one, uh, God's covenant curses on his enemies. Just like we heard that term covenant curses in the connection with the seven seals. Those bad horses were also covenant curses. There is another one here that the primary focus is on punitive judgment. And I am a friendly critic of that view. And here again, <clears throat> they are righteous judgments and vengeance upon those who viciously harass and oppress the faithful. Here it is like they are praying, the faithful, and they are not praying for God to make it up for them. They are praying for God to punish those who did, to harm them. And, and the trumpets uh, will meet that expectation. So, Let's look again at my list of options. What, what's the majority view now? <laughs> on the what question, is it good or bad? Well, we agree on that one. It is bad. What about the by whom question? Is it God or Satan? Well, here the reading tradition assigns it to God. And what about the mysterious third that is so repetitive. Well, the reading tradition says it's a measure of quantity, not agency. And here on the meaning, is it revelation or retribution? And the reading tradition is quite heavy-handedly coming down on the side of retribution. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> here is my friend. <laughs> this, this is the welcome apocalypse who does not seem at least <coughs> of <coughs> sort of a, a, a first impression view to say that this is divine retribution. It is revelation of demonic activity. And now we can read, <coughs> read on. <coughs> the second trumpet blew his trumpet and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. And I have here a, a cross-reference to a text similar to this in Jeremiah 20, uh, 51, 25. And our artists here, uh, <clears throat> this is the Angers apocalypse, the tapestry in Angers, where the second trumpet blows and calamities happen to the sea. The first one happened, calamities happened to the earth. And look at this one. Uh, there is this ball of fire and a third of the ships and a third of the sea. See how he has calibrated this for us here. The, the sort of artificiality of it, but also the intentionality in the text, a third, a third, a third. What does it mean? Why does he do that? <clears throat> and here is the Deuce Apocalypse, the burning stone coming down hard, and it is calamitous for um, the sea and the living creatures and the ships. And <clears throat> here then the Trinity Apocalypse again, that has <clears throat> more detailed and is a little more sort of finely tuned. You see again the third here, and there are some fishes here that have gone belly up, and uh, that's the same thing, and there is the fireball that comes down. The third trumpet, 
And the third angel blew his trumpet, and an enormous star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the sources of water. And the name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many people died from the water because it was made poisonous. And here I have a cross-reference to Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, and we will have more to say about that in a minute. Notice again the thirds, and notice here that the star is named. There is a name for it. It, is, it could be named, if I were to translate it into the plainest English, I would not say wormwood, I would say poison. The name of the star is poison. That's how blunt the, uh, the figure is. <clears throat> here in the Deuce Apocalypse, we have the star that falls from heaven here. It has a demonic character in the artist's depiction, and it causes damage here. When people drink the water, they uh, get ill and they die. So there is something poisonous going on here. And <clears throat> the same thing here in the Trinity Apocalypse, we see again the waters are ruined or damaged, become toxic, and the people die from it. And the fourth angel blew his trumpet, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of their light was darkened, a third of the day did not appear, and likewise the night. Here we have five thirds just about, we have a third of the moon, a third of the stars, a third of their light, a third of the sun first, I'm, I'm sorry, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, a third of their light, a third of the day, and a third of the night. These are so strange the terms that to think that it is a measure of quantity only seems to me to be a, a weak uh, theory. Here then we have a solar eclipse. We have a darkened world. And Revelation is interested in theology. So there is a theological darkness that is now falling on the world. That is really where we are, uh, <clears throat> what we need to have attention to. Here in the Deuce Apocalypse, the angel blows, and we see the sun is darkened, we see the moon is darkened, and <clears throat> these are good depictions of what is happening. Then I looked and I heard an angel, an eagle, a vulture, we could have said. And I heard an eagle or a vulture crying with a loud voice as it flew in mid-heaven. How awful, how awful, how awful. The traditional translation is, woe, woe, woe. For the inhabitants of the earth, at the blasts of the other trumpets that the, the three angels are about to blow. So between the fourth trumpet and the, and the remainder, remaining three, there is an intermission, as it were, and an eagle that appears to pronounce a woe, a kind of how awful commentary on what is going on uh, and is still about to happen. And sure enough, <clears throat> we have the same here in the Trinity Apocalypse, the eagle or the vulture, and the phenomena here of darkening of, uh, of, the, uh, of reality all gets darker, even the night gets darker, as it were. <clears throat> the fifth trumpet. And the fifth angel blew in his trumpet, blew his trumpet. And I saw a star that had fallen from heaven to earth, we had the same in the third trumpet, a star falling. Now we have a star fallen in the perfect tense here. So it's like we are the same scene, except that we are, see it from the, <clears throat> from the point of view of its completion. A star that had fallen from heaven to earth, and the key to the shaft of the bottomless fit, pit was given to him. That's in chapter 9, verse 1, and I have a modern picture here of a red and ominous looking figure falling from, earth, uh, from heaven to earth. 
he opened. <clears throat> so here we have an exception because here the, we don't have the passive voice, we have the active voice. We know who did it. It was the star that had fallen from earth to heaven. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit and from the shaft rose smoke, like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. So here is more darkness. Here is an agent who is doing it. And the notion of smoke coming up from a great furnace is a, is a picture of hell. That is really what <coughs> comes to mind here. This is a more than thousand year old illustration <coughs> that lays it out quite nicely. A star falls from heaven. It has a key. It unlocks the netherworld. And these monsters come out from the netherworld. And then in the back of it, we see who did it. We see the uh, sort of identifying the star and this figure. And it is the devil himself <clears throat> that we see in the artist's depiction. And <clears throat> in a further view of the same reality, the fifth trumpet and all kinds of ominous looking figures will come out as we will see in a moment. And of course, I have to include the Trinity Apocalypse too. Uh, this is a composite figure of the composite images that will emerge in the fifth and sixth trumpet. So here you see a hole in the ground, an event, and you see the key that unlocked the hole in the ground. It began as darkness. It ends up as very ominously looking horses. And you can see what the artist of the Trinity Apocalypse thinks. He thinks he's telling us about the demonic reality uh, uh, that is on the loose in the world. <clears throat> so now to the Old Testament background for these texts. So we have had as our second methodological principle that when we look at these texts from the in the book of Revelation, we ought to almost always look for background in the Old Testament. And on the star that fell in the third trumpet and the one that has fallen in the fifth trumpet, the text that is clearly the most compelling candidate text is in the book of Isaiah, the story of the fallen star. And let's read it in Isaiah 14. How you have, how you are fallen. Actually, when in the Greek translation, it's the same verb as in Revelation. Uh, the, uh, here it is, exepison, that you have fallen from heaven. Most brilliant star son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. So here is a brilliant star, the son of the morning, the best thing God ever created, the best being who is depicted in a state <coughs> of falling or state of being expelled. And I am using this as an illustration of something very illustrious that is described. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will rise my, raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the heavenly council on the heights of the far north. I will rise to the top of the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. This is what we are seeing. This is a sort of person describing himself and his aspiration. Uh, I, you said this in your heart. And then, but you are brought down to Hades, to the utmost depths of the death hole. This is what we have in Isaiah. And this is what we have in the book of Revelation. Or let us see what we have in the book of Isaiah first. Echoes of Isaiah in the trumpet sequence, especially on the third and the fifth trumpet. Isaiah 14, 12 to, 12 to 20. We have a great star, a great illustrious star. Its place is in heaven. There is a fierce struggle, very emphatically brought out in the Hebrew of that text. 
it is fallen, ejected, or sequestered. It falls to the earth and to the netherworld, to the pit, and it is named, or its activity is described as a destroyer. And now we have Revelation. We have a great star. We have an origin in heaven. We have a fear struggle. We have a, that it is fallen or falling. We have the earth as the destination, and even the pit, the netherworld as the de destination. It opened the bottomless pit, and we have a name for it that we will read shortly. So, to call these echoes of Isaiah in the trumpet sequence seems to be a very solidly based uh, uh, conclusion. Now let's read more, because the fifth and the sixth trumpets in Revelation command the most attention. They are very elaborate. From the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given authority like the authority of scorpions of the, of scorpions of the earth. So the smoke metamorphoses into locusts, and the locusts become scorpions and other metamorphoses, as it were. They were commissioned. This is what the demonic reality do. They were commissioned to torture them for five months, but not to kill them. They could not kill them. That they, uh, they were commissioned to torture, but not to kill them. And their torture was the tor torture of a scorpion when it stings someone. This is a very nasty phenomenon. It tortures without intending to kill. That is what we are seeing here. And <clears throat> the welcome apocalypse, I think, does a great uh, thing here. It's quite simple. Here is the bottomless pit. Here is the smoke coming out. Then it begins with locusts, and the locusts will metamor metamorphose. And on top of it, we see this demonic figure who is going to be named shortly. In appearance, <clears throat> the locusts were like horses, another metamorphosis, made ready to go to war. And on their heads were what looked like crowns of gold, and their faces were like human faces, and they had hair like women's hair, and, they had, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had scales like iron breastplates, and the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing to war. There is a creature described here, like an animal, but you have not seen this animal in your nearest zoo. There is no such animal in nature. There was no such animal ever created by God. This is a demonic reality, and this is how the writer strives by all the words and terms he can imagine to describe for us a demonic reality. And the artist is hard-pressed to <clears throat> deliver on this one with the fallen star and all the demonic things that happen here in the wake of it. <clears throat> and likewise here in the Deuce Apocalypse here, uh, well, it is rushing into war. That is what, it, what he has here. And there are chariots and we are witnesses to a battle. There is a war, a cosmic conflict going on here. <clears throat> this is the Cambrai Apocalypse. Same thing here and the demonic reality that is coming up in, in the wake of the fallen star. You see here the key that they have included. And uh, one more, this is the last one. This is the uh, Angers Apocalypse, demonic reality uh, in the world. <clears throat> and now his name. <clears throat> they have tails like scorpions with stingers. And in their tails is their power to harm people for five months. This is what, <clears throat> uh, what he says in verse 10, and then he will name him. They have as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit. His name is in Hebrew is Abaddon. And in Greek he has the name Apollyon. And in English, what's his name in English? 
His name is in, in English is what this guy is doing. Destroyer. He is the destroyer. That's his name. That's how Revelation does it. And now we can put a name on this figure. His name is Apollyon. And in English, the destroyer. That is where we are. <clears throat> Let's read the sixth trumpet. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. <laughs> so the four angels were released who had been held ready for the hour, the day, the month, and the year to kill a third of mankind, humankind. The number of the troops of cavalry was 200 million. I heard their number. All of these terms are terms aiming to depict a demonic reality, including the number 200 million, because that is a huge army. Even today, you would be hard pressed to, 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 uh, f uh, to uh, field an army of 200 million. It's a demonic, it's a symbol for a huge demonic horde. And here, a good angel releases another angel, who in my view, and I will explain it shortly, is a bad angel. So there is restraint applied by God on the bad side and eventually a loosening of restraint where you let go and allow the demonic to play its out, itself out to the full. That's what we are seeing here. And again, you see what is about to happen here in the Deuce Apocalypse and killing, and mayhem, and everything is really quite bad. And this is how I saw the horses. You think he is done now. We are totally exhausted. You know, wait a minute. Don't, uh, don't you know, uh, overload us totally here. But he can't help himself, so here go, he goes on. This is how I saw the horses. Remember, it began with darkness. Or, it be, yes, it began with smoke and then it was darkness, and then it was locusts, and then it was scorpions, and then it was horses. And now we're going to see something happening to the horses. This is how I saw the horses in my vision, and those sitting on them. They had breastplates of fire and sapphire and of sulfur. The heads of the horses were like lion's heads, and out of their mouths came uh, fire and smoke and sulfur. These are elements of destruction, clearly. And by these three plagues, <clears throat> a third of humanity was killed by the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths. For the power, pay attention to detail here, for the power of the horses is in their mouths and in their tails. Their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they inflict harm. Now here are echoes of Scripture, here are echoes of the Old Testament. So there is a head at the front of the horse, there is a head at the back of the horse in the tail, and the head in the back of the horse in the tail is a head like a serpent's head. And so there is a mouth there too, and that's how it inflicts harm. This is descriptions of theology, not only of war and destruction. It is the poison of the serpent in the Garden of Eden, ultimately, that we are seeing here. So <clears throat> this is the Cambrai Apocalypse, and there are horses here with heads, and there is something coming out of the mouths of the horses, and then the tails, and the tails have heads and something comes out of the mouth of the tails. And the Trinity Apocalypse does it even more emphatically for us. Here, uh, first a composite picture of the, of the fifth trumpet and the damage done here first, and then a specific picture of the sixth 
trumpet, hear the heads of the horses coming with poison and killing that way, and hear with the tails of the horses uh, too. Let me circle this one, because that's the main weapon. And this one, because that is the characteristic by which it inflicts harm. Don't get carried away by the crudity of the symbols and thereby miss out on the subtlety of the symbols, because these symbols or these, this speech is not for nothing. <clears throat> so we are going now to do a little cross-linking of terms and meaning. And I'm going to begin with some terms in uh, chapters 8 and 9 in Revelation first, the relation to name. So, because there is a naming of the phenomenon described that begins in the fourth seal, the rider whose name is Death and Hades followed with him. So here is a rider there. When he is called Death and Hell follows him, he is a pretty bad one. So we are going to call that a, fe a, a, a text that features a demonic reality. And here in the third trumpet, we have a, a star. It's named, its name is Wormwood. It's called Poison. The name is Poison. And then we have in verse 11, in the fifth trumpet, they have as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called the Apollyon, and in English he is called Destroyer. We have death, we have hell, we have poison, and we have Destroyer. That's all we have here. That's the name uh, so far. And then we have the activity featured, and <clears throat> let's look at the activity. So here in the seventh, uh, fifth trumpet, the locusts were like horses made ready to go to war. And here in, again on the same fifth trumpet, the noise of their wings was like the noise of many chariots with horses rushing to war. This is, someone is waging war here. And then we skip forward to the book of, to the chapter 12 in the book of Revelation, and we see the first mention of the cosmic war. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels had to fight against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back. The activity depicted is, the, the, is, a, is war. And these are texts describing elements in the cosmic conflict, the cosmic war. And then and we have some details of description here, and we have looked at it already, but here is a summary of what we have in the fifth and sixth trumpet. From smoke to darkness, to locusts, to scorpions, to horses, to horses with human faces, hair like women's hair, teeth like lion's teeth, scales like iron breastplates, wings making noise like the noise of many chariots rushing to war, breastplates again of fire and sapphire and of sulfur, lion's head suddenly, and tails like serpents having heads. This is a composite figure that artists are hard-pressed to depict, but when they try, what comes on their canvas is a demonic reality, unambiguously. And so it shall be. The most telling characteristic here is in these two verses in chapter in, in, on the sixth trumpet. The heads of the horses were like lion's heads, and out of their mouths came fire and smoke and sulfur. This is the damage it does, does in a kind of bird's eye view. And then this detail in verse 19, the power of the horses in this, in their mouths and in their tails. Their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they inflict harm. You can read this as a depiction of military matters if you wish. You will do much better if we read it as a depiction of theological realities and the contest for how to, what is going on, what is true in the world, and what is true about God, above all. <clears throat> so 
here then I I had to uh, I have an enlarged uh, Trinity apocalypse here with the heads here and the tails with heads here to just drive that point home more and then <clears throat> Let's look for a moment on the influence of chapter 12 and chapter 20 on what we are reading in, these, uh, in the trumpet sequence. So let's go to, chapter, <clears throat> to this depiction again, cross-links within the book of Revelation. Starting here in the chapters dealing with the trumpet sequence, we see a power that wages war, we hear three woes, woe, 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 and we hear 13 times mentioned a third of this, a third of the earth, a third of the sea, a third of the sun, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, a third of the night, a third of the day, and so on. That's what we have here in the trumpet sequence. Here in chapter 12, we have power waging war, launching a war. We have a proclamation of woe, woe to the earth. And we see that a third of the stars were thrown down. So we have the same elements here in chapter 12. And I am suggesting that we should see a line, a, an arrow pointing from this reality retroactively into the reality of the trumpet sequence. This reality comes later in the text, but you and me, as re-readers of the book, we have figured this one out, and we know that the reality depicted here is also at work earlier. <clears throat> Let's look at one more. Now, chapter 20. <clears throat> in chapters 8 and 9, or chapter 9, we hear a message to some angels, release the four angels who are bound. So the four angels were released. And we wonder whether they're angels that are released. Are they good or bad? Is it a good reality or a bad reality? Is this God in some ways unleashing himself, as it were? And then we read in chapter 20. Let's read in chapter 20. We see an angel coming from heaven. He sees the ancient serpent and bound him for a thousand years. After that, he must be released for a little while. Here, it's the good side binding the bad side and eventually saying he will release it. Well, guess what we should think here? It's the same here. It is the good side releasing the bad side that has been bound. It is permission to act out what you really represent in both cases. And we will take a line then that runs a connection <laughs> connecting chapter 20 and chapters 8 and 9 too. I'm sorry that it is so complex, but that is the way it is in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> one more thing, just to get this one right, to hear the melody almost like a music theme, almost like it is a kind of symphon symphonic mantra, an instrument that carries a certain tune for a, a period here. A third of the earth, a third of the trees, a third of the sea, a third of the living creatures, a third of the ships, a third of the waters, a third of the sun, a third of the moon, a third of the stars, a third of their light, a third of the day, and likewise the night a third of humanity, a third of humanity. These thirds, it would be contrived if they were signifiers of quantity, but they are signifiers of agency. Another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and seven and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. This is the demonic signature on reality. It is not meant as quantity, primarily. It is meant as agency. And it is demonic agency we have here in the trumpet sequence. <clears throat> Illustrations again, Cambrai Apocalypse. 
the tail of the dragon sweeping down the stars. And here in Albrecht Dürer's depiction of the same scene, the dragon and the dragon's tail sweeping down the stars. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> now to adjudicate what we have done and to sort of ask you and ask of ourselves what we have uh, uh, witnessed so far. <clears throat> so the seven trumpets, the what question, were they good or bad? And we are in agreement, everyone is in agreement, it's pretty bad. By whom? Was it God or Satan? It wasn't God, it was Satan. And here <clears throat> to make the welcome apocalypse remind us about that, uh, that it is a demonic reality that comes to view, or this one even older, thousand years or more, showing us a demonic reality on the <clears throat> by whom question. And the mysterious third, <laughs> was it quantity or agency? We opt for agency. And again, with Dürer and the dragon and his tail. And then the last one, have we been reading about divine retribution or have we been reading, reading about revelation? Uh, we will settle for revelation. Here are some points as uh, <clears throat> well thought through as I could do it. When we take into consideration revelations, awareness of itself, a rereader perspective, and John's use of the Old Testament, a clear, emphatic, and unambiguous picture emerges in the trumpet sequence. That's number one. And this is the picture that emerges, the demonic reality at work in the world. Trumpet after trumpet in ever more bizarre images testifies that there is a demonic reality at work in the world. The seven trumpets can be read as a forensic investigation into the handiwork of the demonic. His name, destroyer, his activity, war, his element, darkness, and his method, deception. Emphatically, the trumpets must be understood as revelation and expose of the demonic reality, and not, again emphatically, not as divine retribution. 